where we've been there and, and done that. As some would say, been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. I've been low, I guess is what I say. I don't know. <laughs> but we also learn that God desires to refresh us. Amen. That whenever we're discouraged, that God wants to refresh us, that God wants to rejuvenate us, He wants to recharge us so that we can go on and not give up. He wants to gather people around us to encourage us. Amen? And that's why we encourage you to come to, to home group and home fellowship as well. Amen. Because you may meet a Elisha that stays with you and is your confident and your friend the rest of your life. God desires to refresh us. And there's something that I would encourage you to do. And in fact, if you got a pen, I would write this down and put this on the refrigerator. Something to apply that in your life. See, we heard the message last week, but how many find it easy to forget things after a week? Some of us forget things after a couple of hours, a couple of days. But there's something that the Lord just prompted me to write down to help apply this in my life daily. Because remember when we talked about letting Jesus take our heart and rule and reign in our hearts and, and lift our burdens. Because a lot of times we can take on life and take it on ourselves in our own strength. But this is something simply that I've, I've written. I wrote it on the refrigerator and there's something I was going to just write on the card to remind myself and to daily ask the Lord of this. And I would challenge you to pray this every day and watch what God begins to do in your life. This is what I, I want you to pray is just every day just say, Lord, today... Today, Lord, lift my burdens, take my burdens. Speak through my lips and rule my heart. That's simply all you need to pray. But that sounds so simple, but yet that very thing has enabled me to remind myself that I need to depend completely upon the Lord every day. Amen. Amen. Today, Lord, lift my burdens, speak through my lips, and rule my heart. Amen? Amen. You may even add in there, today, Lord, refresh me. Refresh me, Lord. Give me a new presence. Give me a, a fresh touch from you. And I don't know about you, but since really the Lord has begun to, to speak that word to me, I'm sorry, I had the advantage of receiving it before you all, and then I gave it to you all. Amen. But <clears throat> the Lord has refreshed me, and the Lord has refreshed me. You know, we don't need to go on a vacation to be refreshed. Amen. Yes. We just Amen. need Jesus. Amen. But we talked about living under the influence of discouragement. And what I want to talk to you about this morning is living under the influence of purpose. Because Joseph's life was a life where he lived under the influence of his purpose and his destiny and the dream that he had in his life. And we need to do the same. Amen? Amen. We need to live under the influence of the purpose that God has given us in our life. Did you know that you're significant this morning? Amen. That you were created specifically by God, that you were called out by Him, that you were chosen for a purpose. That God made you for His own. Hallelujah. The purpose Joseph had influenced his whole life. The Psalms say of him that the, the word saying of Joseph, the word tried him. In other words, he held on to, to the, the word that God had given him 
through the things that he went through. I'd say the Apostle Paul was also a person who was influenced by the purpose that God had given him. Amen? Amen. Philippians 3.8 says this, Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Anybody lost everything? And count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Somebody say gain Christ. Gain Christ. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Of course, we want to black highlight that out with our black magic marker in our Bibles. And the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. If by any means, somebody say any means. Any if by any means I may obtain to the resurrection from the dead. Amen. Amen. And the Apostle Paul says, not that I have already obtained nor already perfected, but I press on. Somebody say press on. Press on. I press on that I may lay hold. Somebody say lay hold. So we need to press on and lay hold. Amen. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ has laid hold of me. And see, that's the question and that's sometimes the mystery or the, the lack of understanding that we have is that when the Lord calls us and then he changes us and transforms us, whenever he calls us out and he finds our hiding place, saves us and delivers us, the question really is, is why did he lay hold of me? And the apostle Paul said, I press on to lay hold of Christ for that which he laid hold of me. In other words, he wants to find out why did you lay hold of me? And in that purpose, I'm going to live for the reason you laid hold of me. Amen. See, every, every person in this room, if you name the name of Jesus, if you've had Jesus lay hold of you, if you've had Jesus touch your life, if, if you've had Jesus transform you, then you need to turn and lay hold of him. Amen. To live for the purpose that you were called out for, that you were created for. To live under the influence of that destiny and that purpose.